I'm here with another IB question on topic 3.1, thermal concepts. In this question, we're looking at the change in state of ice into water. We have a quantity of crushed ice removed from a freezer, placed in a calorimeter, and thermal energy is supplied at a constant rate. To ensure that the ice is the same temperature, it's continuously stirred, and the temperature of the contents of the calorimeter is recorded every 15 seconds. The graph below shows the variation with time t of the temperature of beta in the contents of the calorimeter. So we see the temperature rise with time, then remain steady, then begin rising again. In part A, we're asked to mark with an X the data point on the graph at which all of the ice has just melted. So we start with ice at the beginning and then its temperature starts to rise, but then its temperature stops rising and that's when it starts melting. And it continues melting until right here where it's all melted. And then we have water increasing in temperature. Explain with reference to the energy of the molecules the constant temperature region of the graph. In that region, the ice is melting. Energy input into the ice is used to break or weaken intramolecular bonds. So the energy that we're pumping into the system at this point is no longer heating the ice because it's at its melting point. At this point, the energy that we put in is being used to separate the ice molecules from their lattice, break those intermolecular bonds. The mass of the ice is a quarter of a kilogram, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Use this data and the data from the graph to deduce that the energy supplied to the ice is at a rate of about 530 watts. Right. Well, we know that we can calculate the energy input into the ice, Q, that's mc delta t. And we know we can find out about the rate, because if we look at this region here in which the water is increasing in temperature, we can find a change in temperature and a change in time. The change in temperature goes from 0 to 15, that's 15 degrees Celsius, and the change in time goes from 150, 155, 160, 165 to 195, or that's a change of 30 seconds. So if we look at this change in temperature, it occurs over a time of 30 seconds. Coming back over here, we find that the energy necessary to add to the water to change its temperature by 15 degrees is its mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. That gives us 1.575 times 10 to the fourth joule. But at the same time, we know that this total change in energy takes 30 seconds to complete. So the power, which is the energy supplied over the time taken, is 1.575 times 10 to the fourth joule in 30 seconds. And that gives us 525 watts, or about 530 watts. Next up, we want to determine the specific heat capacity of the ice. But actually, before we do that, I just want to come back to this graph and point out one thing. I needed to use 
the slope of this graph, basically. And anytime I want to read the slope from a graph, I want to use as much of the graph as possible. So I chose to use a full triangle rather than taking a small change in time like one second and a small change in temperature, maybe one degree. I'll get a much more accurate result by using the full biggest triangle that I can. And I'll continue to try and do that in the rest of this question, starting in part two, where I try and determine the specific heat capacity of the ice. And we'll use a very similar method. We'll say that the energy that we need to add to the ice to raise its temperature is mc delta t. Now we want that c, so to solve for c, that's qm m delta t. Going back to the graph, we can see that the temperature changes by 20 degrees, from negative 20 to zero, and the time changes from zero to 15 seconds. So we have a temperature change of 20 degrees in 15 seconds. So we know the change in temperature, we know the mass, we just need how much energy is input. Well, over a course of 15 seconds, that's just going to be the rate of at which we're entering energy times the time for which we enter energy into the system. So the power is 530 watts. It took 15 seconds. The mass of the ice is the same as the mass of the water, a quarter of a kilogram. And the change in temperature of, or change in temperature of the ice was 20 degrees. Altogether, this gives us about 1.58 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And once again, it doesn't matter that I'm mixing Celsius and Kelvin because we're dealing with changes in temperature and Celsius and Kelvin change at the same rate. Last question, we want to determine the specific latent heat of fusion to the ice. So we're talking about changes of state now. We're now talking about this region of the graph. In this region of the graph, there's no change in temperature, but there certainly is a change in time. That's from 165 seconds over here to 15 seconds, or 150 seconds. I have to input power at 150 or 530 watts uh, for 150 seconds to melt all the ice which means if I want to determine the specific heat of fusion to the ice, I can go to Q equals ML, or L equals QMM, where the total energy input into the ice is the rate at which energy is input times the time for which it's input. So that's again 530, this time for 150 seconds, and divided by its mass. for a total of 3.15 times 10 to the fifth joules per Kelvin, uh, excuse me, joules per kilogram.